yeah so uh, i want to take you through uh, radar remote sensing so um what is basically radar remote sensing? So coming from the background of what remote sensing is, uh, basically being the uh, the science of how to uh, record information about an object close surface without being in contact with it. Okay, so that's generally uh, what remote sensing is, with some other additional uh, definitions. Uh, however, uh, I believe what you have looked at is so far the uh, optical remote sensing. So whereby optical remote sensing, the only difference is that it depends on uh, uh, on uh, uh, available. Uh, uh, free available light that's from the sun or the electric ma magnetic energy available from the sun if you remember the uh, seven processes of a remote sensing process where you have the energy source then interaction with the atmosphere interaction with the the target that's the ground then again interaction with the atmosphere back to the sensor then after it comes down to the uh, ground station then from the ground station which records this uh, uh, transmission or em energy uh, is changed now uh, into electric form uh, an image which later you process so in remote sensing we have two broad uh, categories of remote sensing you either do what we call a uh, passive remote sensing where uh, the sensor does not emit its own energy but only detects uh, the uh, uh, free available energy most likely this energy is uh, from the sun okay or it has been absorbed by the, the, the soil and then re-emitted uh, later on. Now, however, the other type is the pass is active. So active remote sensing is where you basically, uh, the sensor also emits its own uh, EM energy. So and, uh, if I'm to mimic this, uh, our eye is a passive sensor because it just uh, able to see objects on the Earth's surface as reflected, uh, as the energy as reflected, those objects have reflected the energy coming from the sun. Um, uh, whereas if you have a camera with a flash, camera with a flash is basically an active remote uh, sensor where the flash is the energy it sends, it illuminates the target with and it's reflected back. So the diagram we are seeing in front of you is trying to mimic uh, this kind of uh, uh, a sensing. You see this arrow here showing that something or the EM is coming from the uh, sensor here at, uh, about the satellite. It strikes the tree and then it's back scattered. Okay. Back scattering is what is like, for example, what we call reflecting back. Okay. So back scattering of the signal. Uh, to the sense. Uh, this is an example of a satellite image uh, with the a direction because as you saw in the optical remote sensing, still you have a particular direction that uh, the, the, the satellite is moving, hence the sensor is moving, either it's ascending or descending uh, direction uh, because the, set, the, 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 the orbits of the satellites, remote sensing satellites are also placed in what you call a north-south uh, orientation. So at one point they are climbing, and what point they are descending. So this is what I try to explain. Um, I just want to clear my screen. I don't know what's happened with my screen. But if you see those red, uh, in fact, stop sharing and share again. Red things that are obstructing. Okay, so they are off. <clears throat> so just as I explained uh, earlier, passive remote sensing, as you can see here, this here the system just records electromagnetic energy uh, that was reflected. It could be blue, green, red, or near infrared, uh, or sometimes emitted thermal infrared. This is from the surface. Uh, so, but however, there are also active uh, sensors, as I mentioned. So passive just detects what's still existing. Whereas for the active sensors or active re uh, remote sensors here, these ones create their own electromagnetic energy. And so rather remote sensing we are going to look at is actually uh, uh, active remote sensing because radar uh, sensors uh, produce their own uh, energy. So here, this energy that is emitted by this sensor uh, is transmitted from the sensor towards the, 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 the terrain or in a surface and is largely normally unaffected by the atmosphere. Why is uh, when you, uh, when you're, because this active remote sensing is normally done in the micro, uh, in the microwave part of the spectrum. If you remember clearly, uh, it, when you are taught the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, we'll have uh, cosmic X-rays, okay? That's where you are starting from your left. Uh, uh, X-rays, cosmic rays, uh, you have the ultraviolet, then you have the visible, then you have the infrared part of the band, then next you have the microwave. So the microwave part of uh, the spectrum has larger wavelength. So because it has larger wavelength, actually uh, not affected so much by the by the atmosphere. So interactions with the terrain are producing a backscatter energy, uh, and then uh, this energy is now recorded by the receiver. So it emits the energy, then the energy is going back by the receiver. Obviously, already here, it brings us to some of the advantages of active remote sensing that we are going to see later vis-a-vis -vis the passive uh, passive sensing, which we'll mention later. So the most widely used 
active remote sensing systems are one radar okay so th that's where it, it, it picks the name i was talking about radar remote sensing or i call it uh uh, uh radar mic or microwave remote sensing sometimes it's called microwave remote sensing because why uh, this is micro is doing remote sensing in a microwave part of the spectrum okay so the first one the most commonly used is active microwave and that is radar, okay, uh, uh, standing for in full uh, radio and distance uh, ranging. So here, this is based on transmission of a, a long wavelength. The, the emphasis here is long wavelength microwave. And when you have long wavelength microwave, it is scattered least, okay? When the electromagnetic energy, the part of the uh, uh, spectrum has long wavelength, it's least affected by uh, scattering. That's why, for example, we in, in doing remote sensing, the best we could use is ultraviolet, but it's dangerous to our skins, as you may have uh, been uh, told. Uh, X-rays and, and cosmic rays, those ones have very small or short wavelength that it's, they are completely scattered. So they are, they are not even able to be used for remote sensing purposes. So radar remote sensing, uh, the wavelength is one to 100 centimeters. That's the wavelength of uh, this uh, uh, part of the spectrum. And uh, so uh, they can successfully pass through the atmosphere to, to strike the, the target on the ground and be reflected back. So that's why uh, they can be used in areas, for example, studying where you have floods and you have strong uh, overcast uh, clouds. Uh, also, they can be used where you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, vegetation, thick vegetation, because they can penetrate through, this radar can penetrate through vegetation and strike the ground. So that's why for my research that I was doing, I used the uh, radar imagery, I used it one a uh, uh, radar imagery, uh, because it could, first of all, um, the Elgon region is uh, 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 highly cloudy uh, because of the high relief uh, 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 or high terrain. And also it has the uh, high or thick vegetation. So I want, I needed to use this to be able to penetrate, but also to penetrate not only the clouds, but also penetrate the vegetation so that I'm able to actually reliably measure the uh, ground movement. Uh, the other is LIDAR. Uh, LIDAR is the other uh, active remote sensing system that's commonly used and is based on the transmission of just now relatively shorter or short wavelength uh, laser light, yeah, laser light, which is uh, about 0 0.9. This is micrometers, okay? This symbol stands for micrometers. And then the recording of the energy uh, uh, that is backscattered is done. So LIDAR, I think, has been done for uh, the Albert region uh, where uh, 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 the, to do uh, oil mining or prospecting. So uh, LIDAR can, is also another type of uh, a remote sensing system. Then the other one, which is slightly different, not based on uh, electromagnetic energy, is sonar. Uh, this one is, is based on transmission of now sound. This is now sound wave through a column of water, and then you record back the backscattered energy from the uh, from the object. So this is normally used to detect obstacles in the in, in, in water. So it's normally used for search and rescue, uh, uh, and also uh, for research uh, to detect any. Uh, obstacles uh, within the uh, water. They could be underground volcanoes, they could be uh, shipwrecks, and so forth. But uh, for uh, our purpose as uh, uh, GIS, uh, 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 especially so remote sensing uh, experts, uh, your interest will be in LIDAR uh, or, or radar. So what are the primary advantages of uh, radar remote sensing? So I'll explain this uh, relating a bit to the uh, optical remote sensing. So active uh, remote sensing, which as I've seen is uh, radar is within one, is all weather. It's an all weather remote sensing system. Now, why is it all weather? Because the sensor produces its own energy. So that means that anytime it produces the energy, it can be able to actually record the backscattered signal from the, uh, the, 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 the ground. Okay. So uh, here you find that uh, 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 you, 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 you find it being uh, 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 all weather and also uh, being uh, all day, as you're going to see. Uh, it can be used whether when you have heavy rains, uh, 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 heavy rain storms, and so forth, because it can still penetrate through the clouds. What happens with the optical imagery? If you have tried to analyze uh, optical imagery uh, on over Lake Victoria, you'll find that you have to do what you call uh, cloud uh, cover removal uh, from these images. And sometimes now, actually, they use also radar images to help uh, you in the removal of the uh, 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 cloud. So active remote sensing is all weather. Uh, uh, and in addition, to also be uh, it can be used all time or all day, both during day and also uh, 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 during uh, night. I think that's the third bullet. But before uh, we reach there, it also has uh, uh, synoptic views of large areas. Uh, so if you want to map, for example, areas 1 to 25,000 to 1 to 400,000, uh, mostly for the cloud uh, shrouded countries, uh, this may be actually uh, also uh, imaged. Countries normally co are covered by a lot of uh, a lot of clouds, okay? Because these can actually be able to 
uh, to, to pass through, they, they rather can be able to pass through uh, the clouds. Now, also, you are going to notice later why it is able to capture larger areas. It does what you call side looking. The radar technology does not do direct uh, uh, below the, the sensor imaging. It actually does side looking. We're going to see later why it does that. This brings an advantage of also imaging larger areas, but uh, it also brings disadvantages, but we'll see the disadvantages and how they are uh, mitigated. So, and why do we insist on still doing the uh, what you call the side look. Uh, coverage can be obtained at uh, user specific times, okay, even at night. So this uh, third bullet is that you can use at any time because you have uh, the light source. Yet for optical images, uh, for optical remote sensing, that one has to be done only during day when the sun is there. But for radar or active remote sensing, this one you can do it any day because the sensor is emitting its own. So it also permits imaging at shallow uh, look angles, so resulting in different perspectives that may not actually be obtained using aerial uh, photography. So uh, we'll see what a look angle is, but they, they normally can allow uh, to observe uh, or to do imaging at even uh, shallower look angles compared to uh, when you are doing uh, aerial photography. So these uh, different look angles can enable you to see the, the ground you're imaging in different uh, perspectives and therefore extract a uh, different kind or more uh, uh, more revealing and, and newer uh, information from what you're imaging. So sensing is also sens sensing in wavelengths that are outside the visible and the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum will provide you information on uh, uh, surface roughness, uh, di uh, dielectric properties, and even moisture uh, content. Okay. Now the idea is this: that the energy, the energy, uh, the, 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 this electromagnetic uh, active or radar or microwave uh, part of the spectrum, its backscatter or its reflection is highly influenced by the surface roughness, the electric properties of the soil, which you call the dielectric properties, and even the water content, which is the moisture content, which is not the case, uh, uh, which is not generally the case with the optical uh, remote sensing. Okay? So you'll find that actually in radar, uh, uh, in microwave uh, sensing, you can actually be able to study the electric or dielectric properties of uh, surfaces on the earth. You're able to also to estimate the soil moisture uh, or the moisture content, okay? It may be moisture content in, that, in the atmosphere or it, it may be the moisture content uh, on the ground, then plus also uh, the roughness. I'll give an example for surface roughness. Uh, it has been used in studying the uh, 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 currents eh, or wave, or wave build-up phenomena on oceans to inform the build-up of, for example, uh, 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 tsunamis or, uh, or storms and so forth. So it's an example of uh, 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 this is uh, a SASI C-band uh, radar image. So that's how it looks like. Then here you have a shuttle photo area. Sorry, I muted by mistake. Uh, sorry, so thank you. Um, so I was saying, uh, as we say, the microwave and its components of imaging is that you have a pulse of uh, electromagnetic radiation that is sent out uh, by a transmitter uh, through a, an antenna uh, of uh, specific wavelength for a particular duration. So then uh, this pulse length is measured in normally micro microseconds. So the wavelength of uh, microwave are longer, as I said, uh, they are longer than the visible that we are able to see with our eyes, longer than the near infrared, all the infrared, near infrared, mid infrared, and even far infrared, and also the thermal infrared, which is normally the hot part of the uh, optical uh, part of the spectrum. So normally the wavelength uh, in cent usually is uh, measured in centimeters uh, rather than micro uh, micrometers because they are a bit of uh, larger. Now, one thing you have to know is that this uh, microwave part of the spectrum is again divided into subband is divided into other subbands so that those subbands or what we are calling here the unusual name associated with the radar wavelength this was you are seeing here the k k q x c s l and p are actually just subbands of uh, the microwave uh, spectrum so the different uh, remote uh, sensing sensors actually record energy in these different subbands so for example the k uh, the k k q these are normally uh, not used so much for mapping. The ones that are used so much for mapping, and remember from K, this one has the smallest uh, wavelength of the microwave, and the P has the largest wavelength of the microwave. So ideally, if it was for penetration capability, the P, the sensor imaging in the P part, P subband of the microwave will penetrate more than the K, okay? So that's why even actually the P is used for biomass estimation in the, the thickest of forest. So uh, that means you can have sensors imaging in the X. I think this is the Terrasat, uh, 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 Terrasa, uh, for the Germans, its image is in the X. Then the C-band, that is the European Space Agency, that is uh, uh, Sentinel-1A, 
A and Sentinel 1B, the image in C, but also others. I think we have B, the European uh, ERS, okay, European Resource Center 1 and 2. Uh, then we have the one that images in the S band. Then we have the one that images the L band. L band, uh, the S bands. Uh, 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 I'm forgetting the sensor which image the S band, but for the L band, this is the German, the, the Japanese Alos Pulsar uh, images the L band. So for my my research, I used the C band and the L band. Some of these, like for example, the X band, these are paid up. Uh, uh, paid up uh, uh, images, but uh, the 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 C for Sentinel is not paid up, and also Alus Pulsar at least Alus Pulsar one is not paid up. The P was supposed to come out in 2013. Uh, I've also not used it, but it's, it's the one with the longest of the wavelengths. So what you need to know that microwave is also divided into other subbands uh, for use, and whereby normally the ones used for mapping start from X up to up to P. Okay, the K, Q, and the K normally not used for. Okay, this is uh, a bit okay interchanged. Uh, the the tomorrow spec from here is the uh, interchange uh, a bit showing that now but you still can see the logic here that this is 0 0.3 centimeters up to three meters here uh, what i was trying to explain uh, so and even here they have not captured the 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 the, the k the k and the q uh, they have only showed the mapping one so that's the x the c the s the l and the p and you can see from this uh, wavelength up eh, that the, the P is 10 towards 3 and the X is 10 towards th uh, uh, 3 centimeters and 3 meters. You can clearly see here the, 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 the P is of longer wavelength compared to the X. Okay. The frequency, when the wavelength increases, the frequency uh, reduces. Okay, The frequency uh, basically uh, uh, reduces. So the ones with the longer wavelength have lower DLA. Uh, power. You can see here this 10 power 8, 10 power 9, 10 power 10, and this 10 power 11. So the actual centimeters in the frequency in, in the centimeters, the actual wavelength and the frequencies for these different bands are here. You can see the C band I I I, I use for my research is uh, uh, 3.8 to 7.5. So they will range depending on again which sensor. Because as I told you, the European Space Agency has Sentinel 1A, Sentinel 1B imaging. So they have theirs, then also you have uh, uh, ERS also had. So the C band, they will, they, 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 will, they will react, you know, having wavelength between these uh, ranges. The L band, you can see for it, it's from 15 up to 30. So what I noticed that I would have loved to use L band for my research because the C band was, the, its penetration was not as good. But the problem is that the, 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 the commercial, the, the L band, which would cover my time, my current time, because the images for L band were stopping in 2010 uh, for Alice Pulsar 1. Alice Pulsar 2 is paid off, is, you have to pay and you don't access. But you could see, I would prefer to use the one which has longer, uh, longer yeah. wavelength to, to enable a higher a penetration. So um, you can see here, this, an, this is a, a sample of images for uh, a SA, uh, C band and SA X band. Uh, these are SA images of the uh, portion of uh, Rodonia in Brazil that were obtained in 1994 on 10th of April. You can see how they look like. Uh, there are certain things here. This is an image in the X band, the VV polarization. I'm going to explain what these polarizations mean. Uh, then this is a C band, okay? This is a C band, okay, with the HV uh, polarization. Then this is the L band. Now there's some simple analysis here. You can see the idea the X band has the has this the, the, the smallest of wavelength, then this the, the C and then the L band. Okay. You can see that the L band uh, you see uh, more things. I don't know if it's explained here. Okay, these are just advantage, but has more things. You can see here the X band. This looks like um, some shadowing effect because of the clouds. The X band because has shorter wavelength. Uh, you have limited penetration. Then the penetration improves in the C band. That's why you see the cloudy uh, uh cover is or the the, the the shadow of the cloud eh, is less. Then when you come the L band, which has better cloud uh, penetration because of the la longest wavelength of these three that you have here. You see that actually you're not seeing any effect of cloud. So that's just something you can you can learn there. So to continue with other advantages of radar, as I, I mentioned, they penetrate vegetation, okay? They uh, penetrate vegetation, sand, and surface layers of snow. And it has been actually, this advantage has been used to measure the thickness of uh, snow layers in, in Alaska because they can penetrate actually. Even they can penetrate the ground to an extent that actually they can also be used to study underground hydrology uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, so they can also do underground the, or uh, it can be uh, just some few centimeters or even sub uh, analysis of the ideology. That's how good uh, this microwave sensing is compared to optical, which normally stops. So it has its own illumination. 
and the angle of illumination can be controlled. You are going to see that you can just manu uh, maneuver it, see what called the look angle. You see that, uh, uh, and you change. Why would you want to change these look angles? Again, because you want to observe particular areas in a particular way, so you can change. And yet in the optical, you have to rely what the sun has given you. You have no maneuver and change the look angles. Maybe uh, you, you want to visualize or you want to illuminate better a particular area. You can modify and change the look angles. So SA provides resolution that is independent of uh, uh, distance to the uh, to the object. So that means that, for example, with the size of a resolution cell uh, being as small as uh, one by one uh, beta. So the resolution is not dependent on the distance that the sun, the, 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 that the distance to the object. You are going to see that the resolution is actually uh, dependent uh, on uh, the pulse scale or the wavelength uh, of the of the signal as we are actually going to see so images can be produced uh, from uh, different polar, uh, polarized energy that's hh hh standing for horizontal horizontal uh, hv standing for horizontal vertical uh, vv standing for vertical vertical and vh standing for vertical horizontal now what does this mean this application of polarization um the energy from the sensor can be emitted when it's either vertically polarized or when it's horizontally polarized. So what do we mean by vertically polarized and horizontally polarized? So you may allow me to just use a white screen to uh, show this. So vertically polarized, if I'm to emit the signal and it goes like that, it has gone when it's vertically polarized. If I emit it and horizontal is tricky, but it goes when it's like this. So when you shake the rope in the horizontal way, that's horizontally polarized. So when it when it reflects and then it's returning, because now this is going. So when it's returning and then comes back like that, also vertical, then that's called the VV. It has gone into vertical, it has come back when it's vertical. But when it goes when it's vertical and instead comes back when it is like that, it is horizontal, then that means when it went was vertical, it came back when it's horizontal. So that the polarization of that image is there. If it goes when it's horizontal, strikes the target, strikes the target, and then returns also like that, horizontal back. That is referred to as an HHK. Uh, it has gone horizontal, come back horizontal. But if it goes horizontal and then comes back vertical, okay, comes back vertical like that, then that means it went, went was uh, horizontal, but came back vertical. So its polarization is HV. So this is a VV polarization of an image and it's called like, it's like polarized or similarly polarized. The same thing, HH is also like polarized because it's similarly polarized. Went, went was horizontal, came back when it was horizontal. Whereas when it goes as a vertical comes back as horizontal or goes as horizontal and comes back as vertical, that's called unlike polarized, okay? So or cross polarized went and changed. Now, what causes the change in polarization of the signal when it's coming back? It's caused by the, 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 the orientation of the surface. Remember I told you surface roughness or even when the waves are changing, they change the orientation. So the orientation of the surface that's being imaged can change the polarization. That's the best structure can be used to study the roughness of an object, but also the other thing is the electrical property of the surface. So the electric properties of the surface can also change the polarization. So also polarization studies can also be used to uh, be able to infer the electric properties of the surface. So, uh, it can operate simultaneously in several wavelengths or frequencies, and thus has a multi-frequency potential. Uh, potential, as you can see, the the K, the X, the L, and, and so forth. It can measure ocean wave properties. I mentioned about this. I've just talked about the polarization, so it can be used to measure the ocean wave properties. Uh, using the polarization capability, but also remember it can penetrate cover. It can produce even overlapping images. It can produce overlapping images. If you have some information about some little information about photogrammetry, when you take uh overlapping images again what happens if uh you take overlapping images so if you take overlapping images if you take an image so then the next image you normally overlap like 60 percent overlap so you take another image so th 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 this is overlapping right uh this part is overlap so normally in photogrammetry when you take photos and that overlapping position can actually create what called a stereo uh, a stereo model or a stereo pair you can do 3d you can visualize a 3d now Remember when I was beginning, I showed you some some images, okay? Of uh, they looked like uh, volcano, volcano, volcan, volcano, volcanoes, eh? which were in 3D. So how are how are those 3Ds created? They do this image, like for example, if you have a mountain here which is erupting, you take uh, a radar image here and take another radar image here. So th this first one is overlapping with this, this other. Then you can visualize this one as a stereo pair. It's called as a stereo pair. And you do a 3D visualization. Now this science. In, remote, in your ordinary photogrammetry, it's called photogrammetry. In 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 in, in radar imaging, it's called radargrammetry. Okay? It's called radargrammetry. 
So that's what I mean here. So that's what I have here, radagram. So it supports uh, also interferometric operation using two antennas, uh, for topographic mapping and analysis of instant uh, uh, signals. Now, let me explain this because this, this is what I, I, I did for my uh, uh, PhD, PhD research. Uh, that is the, 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 I use the INSA. So with INSA, it's a bit different. I wanted the white screen. So with INSA, I basically uh, have, uh, you, you have a sensor. That sensor will come if this is my area of interest, okay? How INSA ha happens. Then I come and image, okay? I image today. So when I image today, that's the image that you have there. Then I come back. Let me see if I can change the color. So these images have temporal, remember, temporal resolution. So the temporal resolution for a Sentinel 1A is about uh, six days, six to about, about six days. So uh, six days in a month, you'll have like four images. Uh, so... Then I come and image again. I'm just separate so that it's separate, but it's the exact same place, but from a different position, okay? I also image that area. Come and image a second time, okay? Now, the difference between interferometry and rad radagrammetry is that radagrammetry, you, are, you visualize the overlap to create a stereo or 3D visualization. And that one can be used for different applications. But interferometry, I subtract this image minus this one. I just subtract. And so, for example, if I come and I've imaged where I'm stayed now today in blue, then I come and image it after a month in red. Then I just subtract those two images. And I'm subtract. They, they should be, they fit perfectly. Forget about what I've done here, red and blue. They should fit perfectly. What, what we call in interferometry that they should be co-registered well. Pixel by pixel matching. When you try to do interferometry, try to subtract them when they are not fitting well, it will complain. Now, what are you subtracting? Each pixel has what we call uh, uh, the phase. It has a phase value. So you subtract those phases. Now, why do we do this interferometry? The idea is that you suspect, for me, because I was, I was doing ground deformation movement, the, the idea is that you are saying today, the ground, you are, you are taking the reference. Then after a month, that ground has moved either due to landslide, either due to uh, the water table falling and then the ground collapsing or due to earthquakes. Then that means the ground has moved. Now, when you subtract, obviously do the, all the other corrections and so forth, what you have the major component of that subtraction, if the place has moved, will be the movement. Okay, so that's what is called interferometry. So this is just basic using two images, but there's the, 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 the way it is uh, 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 made more uh, precise by using even more than one image. But for our case here, we can just understand it at that level. Perimetry. Using two antennas, I've told you where the two antennas are. So basically, in the basic layman's term, uh, that's what interferometry is. So you subtract uh, to just re uh, detect the movement of those uh, any of. So these are uh, uh, basically uh, more uh, images. Okay. So the Nile. Uh, this is the Nile River in Sudan. Uh, so the, this the upper one is the space shuttle color. Uh, infrared photo, infrared photo, infrared, and then you have uh, using the radar, a radar, uh, Im the ra radar image, which is a, a color composite. This is called the SA, S-I-C, is a, one of the sensors. Now, uh, we have uh, red. So what they do here in the C-band, uh, VH is taken out to be red. You remember how we construct color in optical images? This is how we construct color in the radar images. We use different polarizations that represent different colors. So uh, uh, the HV is for red. We give it red. Then the, uh, uh, the L-band uh, HV will be green. The C-band HV is red. Then the L-band HH let it be blue. Then after you recreate a color, what is idea in, in, in quotes, I may say post color composite of this, which has picked in infrared, but now for you have picked it in this way using the, also the help of the uh, polarization. So it help, it tells you here. Also, you can combine uh, different polarizations with the uh, different bad images and actually create a, what you call a color composite. So this is just like a post color, it's not a real, real color uh, as is on ground, but it helps you to visualize crisply better. Maybe the, ex it exposes more patterns on the, on the ground so that is the uh, polarization which i've mentioned about and polarized energy vibrates in all uh, possible directions perpendicular to the direction of, uh, of the travel but uh, radar antennas send and receive polarized energy so i've explained energy can be either vertically polarized or horizontally polarized so you'll be able to uh, read it here uh, so i had my diagrams here so what i mean by vertically polarized is this then horizontally polarized is this that's if it goes like that i try to uh, to draw, draw this vertically polarized then 
compared with the horizontal uh, polarized uh, image. So uh, I, I try to draw this also, remember? So when you have a swing and shake, and shake, this is vertically polarized. So and when it, when it hits the uh, any target, so when it came back, also it was vertically polarized. So that is this, okay, what I try to explain. So I have it here illustrated. Horizontally, uh -huh, you have a string, you shake it uh, horizontally like that. This is horizontally polarized comes back also horizontally polarized. So that's, that is HH. I already explained this. It can be HH, HV, and VH. I'll not uh, repeat that. So just to confirm, I told you HH and VV is called like polarized. Then VH, V, and VH are called cross polarized. Eh? Or this, uh, these ones are called co-polarized. Uh, they are co-polarized. These ones are either cross polarized or unlike polarized. Sometimes they, we just use unlike polarized for it, even if it's not shown here. So uh, the example in reality, uh, this is the car car band HH polarized. This is the car band uh, HV uh, uh, polarized image. So as I told you that this is a, a sample. You can see of the, the images, though not commonly used because of their smaller uh, wavelength, uh, but there are a few images that are there. So what is some radar jargon? Because remember why I was saying radar? radar what is radar? Radar is the imaging part of microwave, but we also have a non-imaging part of microwave. Let me mention it here. What is the non-imaging part of microwave? That is called altimetry. That one is used, it's one dimension, 1D, because radar is 2D. That uh, uh, altimetry is used by uh, to determine the height of planes, okay, off the, the ground. So it's, it's just beam, microwave beam, which is sent from the plane, strikes the ground, and then goes back, and it's used, it's used to determine the, the height of the, what, of the plane. Okay, uh, flying height of the plane. So that that's the, we, we are not interested in that because in remote sensing for us we want the two D the imaging one which is the radar. So what are some of the radar uh, may it have talked about earlier? Uh, you can see when you have a, a sensor, it images it it does side looking. Are you seeing it does side looking? What's in yellow here, it does not actually image below. It images away, as you see here. Then, this is called the range vector. This angle is called the illumination angle, but also referred to as the look angle. Then you have the altitude. Then you have the ground range from here up to that point. Then we have, so this is the slant. The slant range is in that direction, but the azimuth, the azimuth is in this direction when you are moving, where you are seeing the arrow pointing. Then the incidence angle is this angle, so when it comes perpendicular to that, that's normal to the earth, that's the uh, incidence. So when you are moving in that direction, the, the tracing you make, eh, this tracing you make, if I was to continue here, the tracing you make like that's called the swath with it. That tracing, because remember you are moving in this direction, you are going this way, if I may get my pen. So you are going in that direction like that. So that means that yeah, this, 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 these are showing you the direction you are moving. So it creates the swath. Because when you are buying these images, or when you are downloading these images, they also talk, talk about the swath, okay? How wide is the swath? Is it 250 meters? Is it 20 meters? Uh, 250 kilometers, is 20 meters? That's the, the swath with it. The swath range, obviously the distance from where you began the imaging to where you have basically uh, stopped. Then flight path, moving basically in that direction. So how does the instance angle keep changing? Here it's when you're on a flat, when you have a mountain, you can see now how the instance angle is basically uh, uh, changing. Okay, the instance angle is here. This is 90 degrees to the surface. When it changes at 90 degrees like this. So this is another illustration. I was telling about the look angle. Okay. So you can see, then you have the depression angle. So depression angle, you see, because this beam is like this and like that. So you have angle for this, angle for that, depression angle. Then the angle for the, the near part of the beam and then the far part of the beam. It's also the look angle that I was talking about. Uh, the slant range, this, the radar beam is actually there. The radar pulse is this shading you're seeing here. Azimuth direction is that direction there. Uh, you see what I was saying? Near range is this one, which is closer. The beginning of the beam. Uh, far range is, should be this one, the 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 one which is the other side. Uh, this is called uh, the ground range. The nadir line or ground track is that line there, just below. This is now taken by a plane directly below the plane or below the set. It's called the nadir line or ground track. Uh, it's a ground range. Then the distance here is the uh, image swath. So here, when you move in this direction, that's across track. That is you're, you're not in the direction of. The, the sensor is not moving in the direction, then for you, this is across, the image across track. So there's always across track, and then there's a long track. So a long track is in front of you. Across track is, as you are moving in front, is perpendicular to the path you are moving. Those terminologies are very important for something I want to mention. As most direct, so let's use the aircraft to, to make it simpler, but this also applies to the satellites. That aircraft will travel in a straight line that's called azimuth flight direction uh uh the, the then the pulses of the active microwave energy illuminate that terrain okay at right angle so as it's moving in front it's imaging at, at perpendi uh, a perpendicular okay or what you call the range or the look direction so you are moving in front but you are looking you are, you are looking 90 degrees away to your direction 
So in that 90 degrees, actually, that's where the imaging does. So near range, far range, we already saw on the on the diagram, the look range, the range, the, the, the range and the look direction. Uh, we also uh, basically uh, saw them in the images. So like, how would it be, like, for example, uh, for uh, for a particular image, you look at an image here, its look direction is in C in this direction. You look at the position of the, uh, of the shadows. Then here, the look direction is the other way around. If you look at the... Uh, position of also uh, the shadows. So the one which is lighter, it shows you that that's where the light is basically being what? Uh, heating, uh, heating fast. Obviously with their respective polarization. So then we have what you call slant range display versus uh, ground uh, range uh, display. We want to uh, look at uh, these two phenomena here. We have your imaging obviously sideways, okay? And your beam is coming in that way. We have one which is, the nadir is directed below you here. We have uh, one uh, uh, part here of field A, B. Then we have another field also here, uh, A. So that one obviously when it's being mapped, you can see here, mapped here as A, B. And also be going to be mapped here as A, B, okay? Now, slant range uh, distance, okay, will be recorded on in an uh, this is how it will be recorded in an uncorrected image. What is this effect? As you can see, A here is as if it's being compressed, and you are seeing B here is being uh, almost the same size or something like that. Now, what what this one means that because of that side looking, you have a tendency or in these these radar images of points that are closer to the nadir actually be compressed, and point somewhere in the middle will be the normal size. Then ones that are far away will be stretched. So actually, that's why uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, an, an image, I'll share with you uh, 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 two slides, another slide which tries to show uh, to show to show this. Maybe let me juggle with it to show you that effect. I'll also share with you uh, this one. So I have also these others. Uh -huh. So this is what I was talking about. So uh, you can see here the effect. You can clearly see you, you are seeing because of the slant. You see eh, being shown here and the, here it's small, here large. So you can see here it's compressed. See the image is what is compressed and here the image is straight. Okay. The image here is compressed, uh, the, which was compressed. They try to stretch it. So they do a, 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 a correction. Okay to 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 correct for it so the distortions okay the distortions this is the slant range just because of imaging in the slant causes this kind of what uh distortion whereby the the, the scale is no longer the same some parts appear stretched others are normal as in the middle then others are compressed so this actually has to be uh changed that's why i i i i, I, I uh, when i measure distances from the image you have to actually cater, cater for that that continue using this I'll, I'll share them with you so you can also look at them uh, we have uh, the other rather distortion being forward shortening and laying over. Forward shortening, rather forward shortening and laying over. Okay, these two slides uh, others will just give you different perspectives. So no, no matter which ones uh, 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 make more sense to you. Now, these similar to the distortions encountered with cameras and the, and scanners. This is what happens. Now, the first one, which is the forward shortening. Okay, it happens normally for objects which are more wide than they are tall. Example, a mountain. Objects which are more wide than they are tall. Example, mountain. Now, what will happen here? When the radar beam reaches the base, because they are so wide, you'll find that that means the base is nearer, is almost towards the nadir. It, it is, it is the, the beam is reaching to the base before it reaches the top, okay? What I, what I talk about here, when the beam reaches the base of a tall feature tilted towards the beam, e.g. mountain, before it reaches the top, the forward shortening will occur. What is forward shortening? The front side of the of the mountain appears to be short. You know, generally, this mount, I'll give an example if you look at these images, try to look at these images critically. Let me just try to zoom and see. You see, it, 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 it may, this, by this seat, appear as if this other side is longer and this other side is shorter. And, and you are seeing it's light. That means actually the sensor is this other side. The sensor is this side, this image from this side. So it's light. Side which is dark, that means it's the opposite side, okay? Now, you see critically, it looks like this side, the, the sides, these other sides are short, short, short. These sides are long, 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 long. This is deceptive. Because generally, mountains will have ten, tend to have some symmetry. Apart from, obviously, some cliffs and all. But it will have some, some symmetry. Whereby the right and the left is normally balanced. Now, when you start seeing these things, okay? Whereby one side in the mountain is appearing shorter than the other. You are having that side which is at the forefront being shortened and the diagram that explains the shortening is actually the one up here so that is rather for a shortening what about the uh the other one laying over now the rather lay over for it occurs now when the object 
that is being imaged by in, in, in a radar in solar distortion is mortal wide. What's an example of this? Are the storage buildings, storage buildings. So, because it's not normal to have a mountain which is uh, too steep and sharp like that. So normally for storage buildings. So what do I tell you here? Uh, Leo Valkas, when the radar beam reaches the top, now you can see that the distance from here up to here is shorter than the distance from here up to here. So it's the reverse. The, the, the beam now is reaching the top before it reaches the bottom. So how does it, how is it normally plotted? The, the top is plotted first before the bottom. What is the effect of this in, act, in actuality? Actually, the images will tend to, to be bending or leaning towards you. You have seen, for example, images of buildings whereby they are tilted towards you. They are bending, they are leaning, they are laying over. So this is the cause. And also it has to be corrected for uh, before you do a radar. So then the other is shadow. Shadow. Is also a radar distortion. Now, shadow is self-explanatory that because it does side looking, because we do side looking, what happens with side looking? You you are blocking off because you are going to block off totally the other side. You know, this black you are seeing is because it's blocked off. Imagine if the sensor was to be directly above, this side will be illuminated. But when you are side looking from, from the side, the opposite end where uh, you will be in a shadow. So shadow occurs when the radar beam is not able to illuminate uh, a particular part of the image just because it's being blocked by the rough terrain. So these all these distortions we have talked about, uh, apart from the slant range, are caused because of uh, that they are they are expounded when you have rough terrain. But when you have uh, flat areas, they are not really a big problem. So whenever you're working in hilly areas, you have to look out, out for this. Now, radar is bad because, radar is good and bad, but it's bad here because you, wherever you have black, there's no back scatter from there, there's no information, you can't do any analysis. However, however, the disadvantage of radar shadow has actually uh, uh, has started up another serious application. Radar shadow is used for height estimation in radar image. You have seen, you can determine, in biomass estimation, you can determine three height, three heights by studying the what? the shadows, you can determine the height of buildings from shadows. You know, you know, like for example, someone can try to estimate if you have a short person and you have a tall person and you see their shadows, you can roughly estimate uh, the height of those people from just looking at their shadows if you have not seen them physically. So the same thing is actually borrowed within uh, radar uh, imaging, which is the mapping part of, of microwave sensing. So again, in these slides, I show clearly the red vertical, the black horizontal so i'll give you both because they can uh the viewing geometry so in the viewing geometry uh we uh we had mentioned about the other also has but b being the look angle a being the distance angle c the range angle okay as you can see here okay so i'll share with you this because they, they, they both add on something here and there now i was explaining the pulses which i, I can also explain here Okay, I was explaining the pulses, okay, which are also in the last slides I'll share with you. Now, unlike, unlike, I want you to note because this is a very big difference. Unlike optical systems, that is optical remote sensing, okay, a radar's spatial resolution is a function of a specific property of microwave and the geometry. In optical remote sensing, which you have studied, spatial resolution is defined as the smallest possible object that can be identifiable in an image and this is a function of the resolution cell okay for example if your resolution cell is bigger than a, a car you won't be able to identify a car if your resolution cell is smaller than a car you should be able to identify a car you know that the aspect of spatial resolution now i'll tell you one thing about uh microwave that microwave, which you also see in these notes, because it, it images in the longer wavelength part of the spectrum, okay? And because it images in the longer wave part of the spectrum, that long wavelength part of the spect of the electromagnetic spectrum has weak energy. By nature, it, it has low energy. And because it has low energy, they tend to want to image a very large area. The res resolution cell is made larger so that you can collectively have to be able to record a significant signal for you to do remote sensing. So by nature, its spatial resolution actually is low. And that is an advantage of what? Of imaging in the microwave. Generally, the spatial resolution is low. So we leave, we don't use that, terminolo that, that terminology of, of, of optical in us and look at the resolution. Instead, instead, we look at what we call across track resolution, okay? And also you're going to see azimuth resolution across track resolution and azimuth resolution now you look at that plane there the plane appears to be moving towards you so in, in towards you or towards inside the, the 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 computer there you are along the azimuth but when you the way you are standing when you raise your hand when you raise your hand eh, sideways raise your hand and take it down 
is that when when you raise your hand the image goes and you start you are walking in front that, that's how the imaging is done with remote sensing when you are walking the direction you are moving is called azimuth when you raise your hand the direction that your hand is moving is called across track across track the resolution the, the resolution of, of of radar is in terms of across track resolution which is dependent on the length of the pulse on the length of the pulse okay so this is the pulse i see the pulse okay so the pulse uh, 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 uh the pulse length okay of the signal now the resolution is how how do you determine the resolution imagine you have two objects at one and two then you have another object at three at four now the resolution or the across track resolution of a radar image you get half of the pulse length this is just the design pulse of the of the of the of the, of the radar beam i don't know if i may let pulse to wavelength or the but you can is in sound the pulse makes more sense okay then half of that pulse length if object one and two their separation distance is less than half the pulse length then one and two is going to be seen as one object it can't be separated yet three and four whereby their separation distance is more than half the pulse length these ones can be separated what do we mean? When you want to, to observe detail in radar, you, you want to go for a smaller pulse. Then when you have that smaller pulse length, you divide by two. Let me say if the pulse length is eight. If the pulse length is eight centimeters, then you divide by, okay, no, that one may not make sense. If the pulse length, let me use a, a normal. If the pulse length is 30 meters, if the pulse length is uh, uh, maybe 30 meters, just for explaining purposes, then you divide by 30 by 2 that is 15 centimeters uh, 15 uh, 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 meters so if it is 15 meters sorry centimeters because I remember centimeters 30 centimeters then you divide by two, that's 15 centimeters that means that if me and your friend are standing less than 15 uh, centimeters we are going to be seen as one human being but if you are standing and our separation distance is more than 15 centimeters we are going to be seen by as two different people so that's what is called across track resolution we don't talk about it it's unique because it's not in optical now what about the other azimuth okay azimuth or what you call along track resolution that's another one now that one was across track this is azimuth now azimuth is dependent on the what you call the beam width or angular when you release like if you look at a torch light is going out it becomes wider and wider and wider and wider okay what's the beam width of that uh, torch it is the when you look at the reflector inside where the bulb is there's a particular b width of that uh, the, the, the angle of the beam that angle here which would be like this okay so azimuth azimuth resolution you can see the the the, the, the for the one and two to be differentiated the beam width you can see here should be smaller than the separation distance that means one and two will be separated but three and four will not be separated because the beam width is engulfing both. So what does it mean? It's always, we always want to generate a smaller beam. We always want to get a smaller beam. But also what is showing us here is that the, 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 the objects that are closer to the plane uh, uh, will experience a higher uh, 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 resolution in the azimuth than those that are farther away. That's another thing that we learn also from here. So rather illumination therefore uh, propagates to increasing distances from the sensor and therefore the azimuth resolution becomes coarse becomes bad okay the more you move away from the sensor the more you move away the azimuth becomes bad that's why three and four which are, are, are roughly the same separation distances as one and two are actually not being differentiated when you move further away so the, the radar beam the radar beam width is inversely proportional to the antenna length now there's a very important thing here again which i want you to note i want you to note something very important here the beam width is inversely proportional to antenna length now antenna length that means that the bigger the antenna length the smaller the beam width and the better so which means that what we are saying here let me just get my highlighter i'm trying to get the highlighter which means that the longer the antenna, the narrower the beam and the finer the resolution. I want to note those things. So finer range resolution can be achieved by using a shorter pulse length for the for along the range. Along the range, just get a shorter pulse length. Okay. For the for, for that one, along the, the one we looked at the previous slide, this one can be done uh, within certain engineering design uh, restrictions. So you can just change the design of the antenna and play around with the what? Along the range, along this one, along the range. But something interesting happens with the azimuth 
which sometimes is confusing. What am I saying? Along the range pulse length, that one you can just in the, do the change in the design, but you also have some limitations. Now, what about the azimuth? Listen carefully. Listen carefully on this slide. Finer azimuth resolution can be achieved by increasing the antenna length. That one we know. However, however, the actual length of the antenna is limited by what can be carried up on or can be carried on an airborne or spaceborne platform. Yes, you can increase the antenna, but you are limited by how much you can carry, how, how long an antenna you can carry on the plane. But you ask yourself really, how long are they really talking about? How that these antennas can be to get the accuracy that we want. Now they are telling you. Airborne radar antennas are usually limited to one to two meters. Ones of the plane, uh, uh, the airborne radars are limited to one to two meters for satellites. However, they can be 10 to 15 meters in length. So. What they are telling you here is that uh, there's another video which I made uh, share with you, maybe at, at request which explains. You'll find they were trying to explain that actually you find that if you want to, to just get accuracy of about uh, 30, 30 meters of Landsat using radar, okay? You may find you may have to have about like one kilometer of an antenna. I will share with you that video on, 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 on what explains this phenomenon, which sometimes is very confusing. You may need about one kilometer of an antenna. Now, really, a satellite cannot carry one kilometer of an antenna. Cannot carry one meter of an antenna. I'm emphasizing this because it, it, it explains something which is so, so paramount, okay? But to overcome this limitation that we, we, we can only, a satellite can only carry 10 to 15 meters of length of an antenna. We can't carry a kilometer to get accuracy, which is within the range we would want. The, 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 the radar comes up with something we call a synthetic antenna, artificial antenna, not a real antenna, comes up with an artificial antenna. So that's why I say that to overcome this limitation, the forward motion of the platform and the special recording process of the back scattered echo are used to simulate, simulate. That's why it's, it's synthetic simulate a very long antenna and thus increase the azimuth length, the, the, the azimuth resolution. So the azimuth resolution of radar is increased by simulating a very long antenna, that one kilometer, it's just simulated. It's not done real. That's why, what I'm explaining to you, that's why some of you are going to notice from now that when you're talking about radar images, they talk about SA. They talk about SA, meaning synthetic, S is for synthetic aperture radar and they don't talk about this one they don't have they don't talk about r a r this one would be rio aperture radar if at all would carry on 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 board the real length that we require to achieve the azimuth the, the azimuth resolution we want then that one would be real but because we just simulate instead we come up with what we call a synthetic aperture radar so this what's the synthetic i'm going slow here because i just wanted to pick this now, as a target A, now it's going to be synthetic. You see, this plane has a one meter, one meter. It's flying from here to here at one point up to here. It has one meter. Now that one meter, it wants to image here. When it is here, it images like this. That's the portion it images. Now, when it moves until here, it also images, okay? When it moves until here, it also images, okay? Now, the analysis, the analysis, is that they 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 make a recording fixing as if we had a long antenna from starting from where the plane is here up to here to be as if that antenna imaged a beam of only this width of only this width to be able to resolve a so in short the actual antenna okay the real the synthetic aperture antenna is the b but this antenna is not a real physical antenna it's actually an antenna uh, they will tell you it's an antenna a, 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 a very long antenna which is simulated by the movement actually it's the b from this point up to this point so it's explained here that as the target a enters the radar beam one the back side the echo from the transmitted beam will begin to be recorded so as the platform continues to move forward all the echoes from the target for each pulse are recorded during the entire time that the target is within the beam. So then the point at two, uh, the point at which the target leaves the view, uh, that's at beam two, sometimes the time is now the length of the simu uh, simulated and synthesized antenna B, what I've just tried to explain. So uh, I, the idea was if you do have only one antenna like this, this is too wide, that means that A, another thing here, 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 will not be able to be differentiated because it is very wide. But when you consider as if 
the, the, the plane moving here, 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 then you process and you simulate an antenna as if the antenna is this long, as if the antenna is this long, then you end up having a beam width which is this small. Ex, uh, expanding the beam width com uh, combined with the increased time, a target is within the beam as the ground increases, balances each other out such that the resolution remains constant across the entire uh, swath. So this method of achieving uniform, fine, azimuth resolution across the entire imaging swath is called synthetic aperture radar or SAR. So most airborne and space borne, this is the plane or satellites radars, employ this type of radar. That's why you're going to see Sentinel 1A SA images. Uh, they will tell you uh, Terra SA, already tells SA. So they're telling you that actually all they'll be having that word SA, 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 because they have, they, they, the way they have processed the resolution of the azimuth, uh, of the azimuth they have used a synthesized uh, antenna and not a real antenna. If you wanted the real one, you'll get the antenna which is like one kilometer and attaching a satellite or a, uh, uh, on a plane along, which could not obviously work because of, of movement dynamics, okay? They will actually crash out of out of the air. So this one's surface roughness, uh, in this slide I explained. So moisture function, which which we already uh, basically uh, also uh, talked, talked about. But I can also maybe mention uh, something on them. I say that uh, surface roughness of the target. So simply put it, a surface a, a surface is considered smooth if the height variations are much larger than the radar wave, or wavelength, uh, radar wave, or wavelength, okay? So when the surface uh, height variations begin to approach the size of the wavelength, then you appear rough. So uh, this in conjunction with the, the polarizations, you can be able to, to determine even the direction of which the object is, not only about the rough. Um, so this is the radar viewing and surface geometry. So generally slopes facing towards the radar will have small local SS angles causing relatively strong backscatter, okay, to the sensor, which results into brightly toned uh, images uh, in these very uh, rugged uh, terrains. The moisture, the presence or absence of moisture affects the electrical properties of an object or medium. The changes in the electrical properties influence the absorption, transmission, and reflection of what? Electromagnetic energy. So that's moisture content will influence how targets will reflect the microwave. So generally, uh, when some when an object has a lot of moisture, it will appear very bright because it's reflecting so much. Uh, uh, and so that's the basis, as I told you, of estimating uh, uh, soil moisture in, in this uh, object. So one thing you also have to know, to know about uh, radar is that radar some, has a problem of having what you call speckle. This is a salt and pepper uh, uh, kind of visualization. This is what you call speckle. Okay, so uh, why, why do you have this speckle? This is just caused by the random constructive and destructive interference, okay, of multiple scatter returns that occur within each resolution cell. So speckle is, is essentially a form of noise which degrades the quite normal of radar images. Generally uh, it, it preferred for you really to what? To remove this uh, radar, radar. So what are the two ways we remove this radar speckle? The first one is mount look process. Then you can also do spatial filtering, okay, filtering. Yes, the filtering is similar to, to how you did you did it in what in in the opt for remote sensing. So the multiple loop processing. Uh, what do you do here? You just divide the beam into uh, several other narrower sub beams. You can see here this beam is divided into several other sub beam. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So each sub beam provides an independent look. Now each sub beam will have an independent look. So uh, each of these looks will also be subject to speckle. But by summing and averaging, by summing and what? And averaging these uh, different now uh, 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 constructive and destructive interferences in these smaller subbands will produce a better refined image than just having one image with a large uh, beam width, which has a lot of uh, a lot of constructive and destructive interference causing a lot of noise. So this mount looking is usually done during data acquisition and speckle reduction by by, uh, by by spatial filtering is performed on the image. So normally this mount looking is normally done when the, the data is being acquired, okay? Uh, for uh, 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 not at the image processing. So for, for this filtering, filtering um, just like how you do filtering in optical, you use a, a three by three or five by five filter 
I think you may have been, uh, uh, Professor Julie must have talked about this, uh, must have talked about this. Um, let me just see, mention something about it, but he, he, for sure he talked about this. So where you have uh, an image, okay? You have an image, okay? Then after having an image, that image has uh, no grids, uh, space grids, and these grids have uh, uh, backscatter values behind it, eh? backscatter values behind You have your may it be a three by three. Oh no, should have seen the color. So you can have a three by three filter. So that three by three filter normally have uh normally having obviously values of one behind. Hey, three by three. It's a three by three. Sorry, so how do I emphas undo? So you remember this one has ones. Okay. So I'm just it's just a revision. So you multiply that one times the one of the 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 the, 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 the back scatter of the image below. Uh, plus this one times that one below, plus this one times that one below, plus this one times the value below, plus this one times the value below, plus this one, one times the value of the back starter below, time, uh, plus this one times the value of the back starter below, times one plus the value of the uh, data below. Then after you, add, uh, you sum up all, divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then uh, the, the answer you get, you put in the middle here, okay? Then after you shift, don't think I, I'll be able to shift, but then after you shift the, you shift now, shift the filter to that. You do the same process. After doing the same process, you, you write the value there. Then after you shift. So you can look at filtering. The, 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 the filtering is similar to how we do filtering also in optical. So uh, this is an example of uh, uh, an image which has speckle without being filtered. And this is an example of an image uh, after being filtered okay so this is an example of a product of a uh, radiometry in applications and uh, this is the uh, uh, how you do interferograms and the uh, basically subtract two images okay so that one i already talked about it in the previous slide but i wanted to show you here this is how an interferogram product when you subtract you see the difference between two phases this is how the image looks like it's, it has what we call fringes it has fringes as you can see there Okay, so normally just to, uh, if you have to do this practically, ideally you get the the wavelength of the of the, the wavelength of the signal, then you count the fringes. If I want to know the how much this ground has moved, I can count like here. I can count the the, the changes one, two, three, four. Then I multiply four times the the, the wavelength of the, of the signal. Maybe if the signal is three centimeters, I multiply four times three, six, four times three, I get twelve. Then that means this point, this area, okay, this ground point has moved by uh, 12 centimeters. That, that, that's how actually you do. So this is a product when you subtract, okay, those two images, okay? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you see that. So uh, for 3D, it's an example of how 3D looks like, red implying the high point and then green, uh, the low point. So basically that is it. Um, I juggled, hey, uh, I juggled between, let me see. I'll share with you both, but it's the same things, uh, slant range here, uh, these slides, spatial resolution, range resolution. You can use the, the two. You can see that I try to explain to you, eh? You, you can see here how you're going to differentiate what I was trying to tell you here, okay? Uh, if the pulse is a particular uh, amount, how do you differentiate one and two? So it's just expanded. Uh, the same thing here, just to re-emphasize uh, this point. Uh, maybe on the slide here, because that one was in explanation uh, 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 format, uh, you can compute the range resolution mathematically, okay? By multiplying, so that the range resolution as a value is equivalent to the pulse length tau here, okay, times the speed of light. I wanted to mention about here, uh, times the depression angle. You see what the depression angle is, okay? You see the depression angle. We are using gamma. Uh, or, uh, so that's over two cos of the depression angle. You can get the range resolution. So apart from knowing what it is, you can also compute it. So uh, I think here they have some examples with values in. You can try out for the azimuth. We, we have explained the azimuth in detail, okay? You can see here high azimuth resolution, this one poor azimuth resolution. You can again look at this and appreciate. I bring your attention to the formula for the azimuth resolution. This resolution is computed by, uh, is equivalent to S, which is the slant range distance. Uh, 
slant range from here along that until the slant range for the near range uh, from here up to here. So it's just the distance you measure along the, the beam. So the slant range times uh, the, the, the wavelength, okay, of the signal, uh, then divide by the antenna length. Okay, so that's how you get the uh, uh, resolution, uh, the azimuth resolution. So you can also actually compute it mathematically apart from knowing what it is. Okay? So again, here you can fit in uh, some of these uh, computations. Uh, this is giving an example, showing you why one and two, good azimuth resolution. Okay, they have computed the azimuth resolution here at 20 kilometers to be equal to 12 meters. Okay, and the azimuth resolution here uh, at, at 40 kilometers to be 220 uh, meters. So it's uh, far much wide, so you can fit in the other formulas and you'll be able to uh, also uh, look at. So they are taking the distances between tanks one and two, and this is between tanks three and four at 200 meters. So if you if 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 the, the distance between one and two is 200 meters, and the azimuth resolution you have computed at 20 kilometers using the formula we have just looked at that is 120. So 120 is less than uh, is less than 200 meters. So this has to be separated. But this one, the distance between is 200 meters and the azimuth resolution is 240, more than the distance. So they will not be differentiated. So this one, just putting it into the mathematical concept of things, you can basically uh, look at it in that way. So we, are, we, have, we, have, we have seen this, that generally radar relief displacement uh, will, will, will involve uh, image for shortening, okay? Uh, image layover and also shadowing. Okay, just put it to context, just as we also discussed in the other. So here there's the write-up, you can look at it. I've also explained that, I'll give you, as I've said, these two notes to just explain what we basically looked at. This one also is look, telling you about the foreshortening and the uh, and layover, just like how uh, we, we explained, okay? And also the shadow effect, okay? Shadow meaning that this side is not being imaged, so it's, it has a uh, uh, shadow, okay? Effect being uh, observed. So again, here, the shortening aspect, okay, this place you can see the white bit in front here is the, because of the imaging, only this other part is imaged, so it is shortened in a way. Uh, 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 and and the, for layover, when you have the top, uh, the, the, the top bit being uh, mapped, okay, you can see it's being tapped here and being mapped uh, 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 before because the signal is getting in touch earlier, then you have a tilt towards. But the images for the other slide, explain it uh, better this one also has another way it's trying to explain the laying over so these are the uh, images that try to show uh, 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 for shortening okay you can see that you see what i'm explaining here there is no way the, 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 this pile eh, that this side is very short and this side is very long no yeah it is short because of radar beam be radar uh, signal coming from other side so it's shortening so you can see that the same image, if it's taken by an area photo, uh, this area photo shows us that this area is actually longer. It's not as short as this. So an area photo, which at this point is taking the image from uh, uh, from above without doing a uh, side uh, side look. So and these are just some other images to show you to make you continue to appreciate uh, this other. So synthetic aperture radar, there are more notes here to explain, uh, but I've also explained the other side. Uh, uh, the uh, Doppler is simply change in sound or uh, uh, when you have uh, the change in distance between two uh, objects that are approaching uh, each other. So which uh, creates what you call the Doppler, the Doppler shift, uh, which you can see the diagram, you can see is the same as we had the other side for, for explanation. So you can meet the, uh, uh, the use the both to see what misses out on, 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 on the other, but as you have noticed that some have to have an addition to supplement knowledge on it. So that is generally microwave remote sensing. I don't know if we have some questions of something that is not uh, uh, clear, even if I tried to explain. We have one or two questions so that we break off. Okay. Uh, everything is clear for now. I think so. Okay. So, uh, so thank you very much. Um, I think uh, I'll share with both this video first. So maybe any of you, maybe I can also share with the, you can send me your emails. I can also share with you maybe this video if, if 
Yeah, interesting. So thank you very much, class.